Suspense. And the producer of radio's outstanding theater of thrills, the master of mystery and adventure, William N. Robeson. How often have you felt that you would like to get away from it all? Just drop everything, move far away, start a new life, maybe even with a new identity. Well, it isn't as easy as it sounds, as the story you're about to hear demonstrates. So before you buy a one-way ticket to elsewhere, listen. Listen as Dick Crenna stars in Night on Red Mountain, which begins in just a moment. Here's Frankie Lane. I never feel like singing with a bad cold, so I take wonderful four-way cold tablets to relieve my cold misery fast. Right. Tests of four leading cold tablets proved four-way fastest acting of all. Amazing four-way starts in minutes to relieve aches, pains, headache, reduce fever, calm, upset stomach, also overcomes irregularity. So when you catch cold, take my advice. Take four-way cold tablets. It's the fast way to relieve those nasty cold miseries and feel better quickly. Four-way, 29 and 59 cents. Here's a word about another fine product of Grove Laboratories. Had dandruff for years? Now get rid of it in three minutes with Fitch Dandruff Remover Shampoo. Three minutes with Fitch regularly is guaranteed to keep unsightly dandruff away forever. Apply Fitch before wetting hair. Rub in one minute. Add water. Lather one minute. Then rinse one minute. Every trace of dandruff goes down the drain. Three minutes with Fitch. Embarrassing dandruff's gone. Fitch can also leave hair up to 35% brighter. Get Fitch Dandruff Remover Shampoo today. And now, Night on Red Mountain, starring Dick Crenna. A tale well calculated to keep you in suspense. Coming right up. Oh, I'm sorry, sir. I didn't hear you drive in. You can't hear much of anything when the wind starts blowing. Fill her up. Yes, sir. Hey, you better check the oil and water, too. Hey, you got any hot coffee inside? Yeah, hot and black. You know, that's for me. Must be close to zero. No, not that bad. Down around 20. It'll drop tonight, though. Radio says we might get a blizzard. Yeah, and they call this sunny California. Well, we're more than 5,000 feet here. 6,500 at the top of the pass up the road piece. Yeah, I know. I just come over it. You heading north? Yeah, Vegas. How far is it from here? 260 from Victorville. Victorville's 32 from here. What's the matter? You lost? What makes you think so? The U.S. 66 is a direct route. Not many cars come across Red Mountain in the winter. Say. Yeah? Ain't I seen you someplace before? No? Not unless you've been through here before. Ain't never. Hey, not back east someplace? You come from back east? Never been. I come from up north. Why, Rika? Funny. You'd take that mustache off and you'd be a ringer for a kid I once knew back in Jersey City. Joey Perino. Funny. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, lookalikes. You run into them sometime. Sure you was never back east? Sure. Hmm. Funny. Without that mustache, I'd swear you'd you would be mistaken. Yeah. Well, then... Where do I find the coffee? Right inside. Sally will take care of it. You better check the battery and the tires, too. Yeah, sure thing. Good evening. Yeah, give me a cup of black coffee. Huh? Yes, sir. The State Highway Patrol has asked us to make this announcement. Change will be required on all cars in the mountain regions. Tonight's storm is expected to... It sounds like free. you might be snowed in. Mm, won't be the first time. Yeah. That might be dangerous, uh, considering your condition. Oh, no. I'm not expecting till April, and we never get any snow that late. Not even when the weather's unusual, like they say out here? Well, it's never that unusual. You better get Walt to put on your chains. Ain't got any. Oh? Then watch your step going down the hill, particularly Mule Shoe Curve. It's bad in snow like this. Oh, I'll remember that. Uh, is, um, he your husband? Who? Hey, the fella gassing me up, this, uh, this wall. Oh, yeah. You two all alone up here? No, that's my dad. And he better get a move on or he won't get back up the mountain tonight. Uh, where is he? Went down to Victorville this afternoon for supplies. Oh. Uh, you born around here? No. Up north. Why, Rika? Yeah. How did you get? Well, your husband said that's where he came from. 
He did? Yeah. Doesn't he? Well, well, he said he did, didn't he? Yeah, yeah. Hey, uh, you ever hear of a guy named Joey Perino? No. Why should I? Your husband looks like him. Well, what if he does? Hey, nothing, nothing. You ever been back east? Never been outside the state. Gee, you ask more questions than a cop. <laughs> Don't worry, I ain't no cop. He's all set to roll. Oh, how much do I owe you? Uh, Twelve gallons, it'll be three ninety-five. Plus the coffee? Oh, compliments of the management. Eh? It's a policy of the establishment. Free coffee during blizzards, isn't it, Sally? Uh, yeah, sure. Uh, here you are, four bucks. I'll get you change. Hey, don't bother. Three ninety-five for the gas and five cents for the coffee. I got a policy too. I don't take handouts. Oh, look, Walt was. I don't only... want to be on anybody, anything, sister. Particularly rats. Be seeing you, Joey. Joey? What did he mean, Walt, calling you Joey? In a moment, we continue with the second act of Suspense. A message now to those men and women who are living in the United States but are not citizens of this country. In this month of January, all aliens are required to report their addresses to the government each year. Cards in which to report the required information may be obtained at any post office or from an office of the Immigration and Naturalization Service. When the cards are all filled out, return them to the clerk from whom they were received. Failure to register this time can result in serious legal penalties. If you are an alien and have not already registered for this year, make sure you go soon to your local post office or immigration service office for the card. If you are ill or disabled, you may arrange to have a friend or relative pick up and return your card for you. But you must register. Why not stop by at your nearest post office for your card? Then fill it out and return it without delay. And now, starring Dick Crenna, Act Two of Night on Red Mountain. Yeah? Mr. Pirelli? Yeah. I have a long-distance call for you from Victorville, California. Who's calling? Just a moment, please. Who's calling Mr. Pirelli? Mr. Battaglia. Okay, operator, put him on. Go ahead, sir. Hello, Big Pete. Yeah, Bat. What are you doing down in Victorville? You were supposed to be here in Vegas by dinner time. Yeah, 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 I know. But I sort of got lost in the mountains. Figures. I know Judah get lost in Jersey City. Yeah, but where do you hear what I found? A gold mine, I suppose. No. Nah. Joey Perino. You're kidding. Where? In a gas station back in the hills. You sure it's Joey? Positive. He's got a mustache and he's got a wife and he calls himself Walt something or other. But it's Joey, all right. He recognize you? Sure he did, but he didn't let on. I thought I'd better tell you. Wait a minute. If he recognize you, he'll take it on the land. Not a chance. He's up there all alone with his wife. She's in a family way and it's blowing up a blizzard. He wouldn't risk getting her out of there in this kind of weather. Where are you? In a joint called the, uh... The white spot. Sit tight. I'll be there in a couple hours. How are you going to do that? Charter a plane. But, boss, I'll be glad to handle him for you. I'm sure you would, Bat. But this one I want to take care of myself. In my own way, if you get what I mean. Oh, yeah, I get what you mean. I'll wait for you here. Hey, what's the name of this place where he's at? Walt Summit Service. Why? Thought I might give him a ring before I leave. And tip him off? No. Offer him another chance. Are you kidding? What do you think? Walt, Summit Service, good evening. Hello, Joey. You... you must have the wrong number. This is Walt, Summit Service. No, Joey, I got the right number. This is Big Pete. Remember me? There's some mistake. There's no mistake. Ben just told me it was by your joint a while ago. I don't know what you're talking about. This is Walt, Summit Service. Okay, Joey, if you want it that way, it's Walt, Summit Service, and you're Walt. But back to Jersey City, and still Joey Perino to all the boys. And Joey, the boys miss you. All of them. But me in particular. I miss you so much, Joey. I feel I just got to talk to you. I'm sorry. You have a wrong number. Listen, Joey. Listen good. I'm going to talk to you. You got the wrong number. Okay, Joey. Now, listen, Joey. You know what joined a victim called the white spot? 
Yeah, I know it. Good. I'm at the airport in Vegas. I'm taking off from here in five minutes. You take off in five minutes, too, Joey. Look here. Don't I... hang up on Big B, Joey. Don't listen to me. Take you about the same time to get down off that monitor. It'll take me to fly to Victorville. Leave you the white spot. That's an order. I don't take orders from you anymore. You'll take this one. I'll come up there and shove it down your throat. Now, come on. Come on. A highway patrol car just pulled up outside. Oh, you kid, Joe. You think you can scare me off with them two-bit cops? I'm not trying to kid you, Pete. That's my boy, Joey. You finally recognize your old boss, huh, Joey? Now, you ain't gonna squeal to them orange pickers, are you, Joey? I'm not a squealer, Pete. Ain't you? No. How do, how do I know? I'm telling you. So how come you took a powder on me two years ago, huh? How come? How come you just moved? I want it out. You in there? Yeah. yeah. I'll be right there. Who are you talking to? The highway patrol. I told you. You're going to tell them why you walked out at all, Pete? Look, I don't tell nothing to nobody. I just want to be left alone. I want it out and I got out. You ain't out, kid. Nobody ever quits on me. Walter, there's someone at the door. I, I know it. Who are you talking to now? My wife. Get rid of the cops, Zoe. And tell your wife to go to bed. You got the wrong number. And meet me in two hours at the white spot in Victorville. You got it? Yeah. I got the number you're calling, but this isn't it. You better be there, Joey. Or I'm coming up the hill for you. In a moment, we continue with the third act of Suspense. If you have a cold, bronchitis, or the chicken pox, you naturally get to work at once to do something about curing the disease. If the symptoms of some physical illness appear, you try to prevent the illness from getting worse. But far too many of us look upon one of the most serious and most prevalent of illnesses, mental or emotional disturbances, as some sort of a stigma. We're afraid to admit when mental illness occurs in our family and often wait until too late to do something about it. But the rigors of modern living can bring on tensions in any of us. And these tensions can develop into very serious mental disorders if something isn't done to alleviate them. A great deal of wonderful work is being accomplished in the prevention, treatment, and cure of mental illness. If we treat it as just another form of disease, call in the right people to deal with it, support our local mental health organizations, and accept those who have been cured of mental disorders, as we would anyone cured of a physical illness, we'll all be helping to combat and reduce a serious threat to the security and well-being of our nation. And now, starring Dick Crenna, Act Three of Night on Red Mountain. Uh, good evening, Mrs. Parsons. I'm sorry to disturb you, ma'am. Oh, that's all right, Sergeant Tui. Come in. Walt was on the phone. Yeah, yeah, Sergeant. Some crackpot. Got a wrong number. He can't get it out of his drunken head. Well, I just stopped by to see if you folks were all right. Oh, sure. Yeah, snug as a bug in a rug. Have a cup of coffee? Uh, yes, thanks, Mrs. Parsons. <laughs> Guess maybe I dropped by for that, too. Well, there's always some on the stove. How's the uh, weather outside? It ain't fit night for man in a motor car. Mm. Path is closed. Won't be able to get plows through from the other side of the mountain until tomorrow forenoon. Yeah, well, that's what you can expect in February. There you are, Sergeant. Sugar, cream, and hot, I hope. Yeah, wonderful, wonderful, Mrs. Poison. Thank you. Oh, Sally. Yes, darling? Uh, like the sergeant says, it ain't a fit night out for man in a motor car. Yes. Yeah. I thought we might put him up for the night. Oh, of course. Uh, no, I, I I don't want to inconvenience you. Oh, but it wouldn't be... No, not at all. No inconvenience at all. We'd sure like to have you stay. Well, that's right nice of you, believe me, but I've I've got to get on down the road. But it's after ten now. <laughs> You're off duty. In a storm like this, nobody's off duty. <laughs> well, thanks for the coffee, Mrs. Parsons. <laughs> oh, say, I got something to thank you for, Walt. Oh, what's that? The only laugh I had this evening. Oh? <laughs> well, I'd like to hear it. What's the laugh, Sarge? Well, that, that car out front. What car? A couple of hours ago, when I was going up to the pass, that two-tone job standing out front with the big tail fins. What about it? Gold and white covered with mud and snow piling on it. Well, it <laughs> sort of reminded me of a, a bailing duty on a ski slope. <laughs> oh. <laughs> uh, cars like that weren't designed for this kind of country. No. <laughs> I guess they weren't. Well, good night, folks. Well, thanks again for the call. You're welcome. Good night, Sergeant. I'll get it. No. Oh, I will. Walt, Summit Service. You ain't left yet, Joey? Get going. You got the wrong number. Again? <laughs> again. Darling, what is it? Oh, screwball. Well, what's he want? Who knows? He's drunk. 
Let's go to bed. I'm not very sleepy. I know what. Let's sit up and wait for Dad. No, he won't make it now. Well, he might. Let's go to bed, I said. All right, honey. We'll go to bed. We'll go then. I, I gotta lock up. All right. Well. What? What's the matter? Nothing. Nothing's the matter. I gotta lock up, that's all. Now get to bed and stop asking a lot of stupid questions. <laughs> Will be twenty cents for three minutes. Yeah, sister. Go ahead, sir. Yeah, Pete. Well, how'd you guess to be me, Joey? Oh, look, let's cut the kid. I ain't kidding, Joey. I'm disappointed, real disappointed. I fly all the way down here to Victorville just to talk to you, and what happens? You ain't got the courtesy to come down the hill to see your pal. How come you ain't here, Joey? I'm not coming, Pete. You ain't, huh? No. Well, then I guess I'll have to come up there. Nobody's asking you. Ah, Joey, that ain't no way to talk. Lay off, would you, Pete? I've done nothing to you. You walked out on me, Joey. Nobody walks out on Big Pete. See you in an hour. And, Joey? Yeah? I'll try taking the powder. Fella, the bar just told me to pass his clothes. The only way out is down the hill. I know it. You want to change your mind and come on down, Joey? Joey. Joey! Were you flashing, sir? Yeah, I was cut off. Just a moment. I'll try to connect you. I'm sorry, sir. There seems to be trouble on that line. Probably the storm. Okay, sister. Thanks. Is she coming? No, but it couldn't be better. The line just went out in the storm. And the pass is blocked. Oh, what a sweet setup. Yeah, ain't it? Let's go. A pleasure. In a moment, we continue with the fourth act of Suspense. A word of advice to those of you who suffer from acid indigestion, heartburn, or gas. Do you know about the little white tablet in the little green pocket roll? Just a waiting for the moment when you need them to bring your acid indigestion under control. Tums are the little white tablets. In the little green pocket roll Chums for the tummy T-U-M-S Bring relief quicker than you'd ever guess Best for any kind of acid distress Keep them handy in the pocket roll Keep your tummy under Tums control The modern Tums formula has never been surpassed for effectiveness. Always carry Tums, ten cents, three-roll pack a quarter. Or get the new six-roll Tums pack with free metal carrier only 49 cents. And now, starring Dick Brenna, Act Four of Night on Red Mountain. That you, honey? Uh, Yeah. Oh, come to bed, darling. I can't. Where are you going? What are you putting on your coat for? I gotta go down the hill. Well, what's the matter? I'm worried about your dad. I'm I'm gonna go look for him. Oh, now you know he's probably staying in town at the ranches. If you worry, telephone them. I tried the lines out. I, I gotta go down the hill. But Walt, you can't leave me here alone. I got it, honey. I got it. Walt, I'm afraid. There's nothing to be scared of. You'll be safe here. Your gun. Why are you taking your gun? I feel better with a gun. Walt, you're keeping something from me. You've got to tell Look, me. There's nothing to tell. Get back in bed, honey, please. If you promise not to go out. I can't. i got to go, and i got to go alone. And it isn't Dad. It's something else. Look at me. Don't make me try. Hey! How come the place is all lit up like a Christmas tree? Can't be that much business tonight. Oh, Dad, thank goodness you're here. That silly husband of mine was just going out to look for you. He was afraid you'd skid it into the canyon or something. An old mountain man like me, fiddlesticks. I'm glad you're dressed, though, Walt. I promised Sergeant Tui I'd send you down the road with a tow truck to give him a hand. An accident? Yep. Some darn fool was driving without chains. Went through the guardrail at Mule Shoe Curve. 
One of these fancy new two-tone jobs with the uh, airplane fins. Gold and white? Hardtop convertible? No, uh, two he didn't specify, but he recognized the driver. A big shot gangster from back east, he said. Name of Big Pete uh, uh, Pirelli. That was it. I didn't know the other fellow. Where are they? Were they hurt? Hurt? <laughs> They're both as dead as last week's hamburgers. Okay. Okay, I'll get going. I guess I won't need this gun after all. I'll be back in a little while, Sally. All right, honey. See that she gets to bed, will you, Dad? Sure, son. She hasn't had much sleep tonight. Don't worry, darling. I'll sleep now. Good. You know something? What? I love you very, very much. Suspense. In which Dick Crenna starred in Night on Red Mountain. Written, produced, and directed by William N. Robeson. In just a moment, the names of the supporting players and a word about next week's story of suspense. Tennis, anyone? Seriously, if all by yourself you've been tracing the week's news developments on a globe, you may be feeling like a referee at a tennis match. Things have been happening that fast. On the other hand, if you've been following events with Lowell Thomas and Edward R. Murrow of CBS News, there's no question but that you're taking each new development in stride. Lowell Thomas and Edward R. Murrow are experienced hands at sorting out the important details of a story. Every weekday evening on CBS Radio, they tell you what's happening simply and directly. Hear them regularly on most of these same stations. You'll appreciate their clarity in the way they let the facts tell the story. You'll appreciate, too, the background information their years of experience and travel provide. Information only Lowell Thomas and Edward R. Murrow can offer. Information that adds interest and excitement and brings new stories into proper focus. Be sure to hear Edward R. Murrow and Lowell Thomas each weekday evening on most of these same stations. Supporting Dick Crenna in Night on Red Mountain were Celeste Bullis, Doris Singleton, Joe DeSantis, Peter Leeds, Sam Pierce, and Norm Alden. Listen. Listen again next week when we return with another tale well calculated to keep you in suspense. Suspense wishes to salute station KRMG Tulsa, Oklahoma, which became CBS Radio's newest affiliate on Monday, January 5th. KRMG covers 93 counties and reaches about a million families in the southwest and operates on 50,000 watts daytime and 25,000 watts nighttime. Suspense comes to you each Sunday on CBS Radio.